hi everyone welcome back to my channel um i guess i should say happy new year since this is my first book review of 2024 um and i also want to say thank you so much to everyone that my new subscribers and the people that have been like commenting on past videos and hopefully sharing with friends um thank you guys so much i when i last checked i think i had 251 subscribers which is oh so amazing um i do want to get to like 500 by the time this year is up or maybe a thousand so fingers crossed for that um but i am back with a new book review and i'm really excited about this one um so most my most recent book review was actually um by it's Half room um a woman is no man and she has a second book, which is called Evil Eye, which is the book I will be reviewing today. Um, I really, really love that I read these back to back because they gave me like two different perspectives. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. Um, I really loved Evil Eye. I feel like um, it's a different story than, I mean, it is a different story than A Woman Is No Man. Um, in the book, the main character is Yara. She is married to Fadi. Um, she lives in either North or South Carolina. Um, they have two girls. And the only family that's like nearby is Fadi's mother and father um, and like some of his friends. Um, Yara has her parents, um, but she's from Brooklyn, which kind of like ties into A Woman Is No Man because that's where that story was. Um, and she doesn't really have that many friends um, or family around. She has brothers, but they are scattered all around um, doing their own thing. So in the book, Yara has her two kids. She's married. She has like a good home. Her husband has his own business or he helps out his father with his business. Um, she is also, she works at a college. So she went to college, she got her degree, and now she's an art instructor at um, a college. And like I said, they have two children. Oh, I'm not sure if I said this already. Two girls, right? Um, the main difference that I saw from Evil Eye compared to A Woman Is No Man is that no one was stressing Yara about like trying to hurry up and have a boy um, to carry on like Fadi's name or whatever, which is great. Like I was like, oh, thank God. Like I don't have to deal with that again because you already know how I felt about Farida in the last book. <laughs> um, and if you don't know, go read, I mean, go listen to my other book review about A Woman Is No Man because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even going to do it. Um, so that was nice. She has, she's married. She doesn't have pressure to like have a specific type, specific gender of a child. Um, she has a job that she enjoys. But I think we like very early on were introduced to like the concept of like, even though Yara's life is like, ideal and better than most like arab women's lives um that would be like what they would be experiencing hers is way better she still wants more for herself so in the book like an opportunity comes up to travel and she's like oh my god i really want to do it like she loves art wants to like create her own art wants to be like a real professor not just like an instructor that's like doing like um a few classes here and there um and we see very early on like she starts like you know having this like internal like desire or want for more and she like brings it up to her husband and he's like no like we, like we don't have the means to do that like someone needs to watch the kids like wh why would you be going off to be traveling like we'll do it later like let me just get my money up blah blah, blah. and i think she was starting to realize pretty early on that like she's stuck like at her job she's stuck being an instructor because they're not giving her like the official like professor rule in her marriage like she wants to go travel and do things to like bring her self-fulfillment and her husband is like no you need to take care of the kids like who would take care of them or no i need to keep working like i'm the one that's bringing in most of the money like your little teaching gig isn't doing much or whatever and i think it like causes her to like get more and more and more frustrated and she ends up having like a major like blow up at work um which and which ends up with her being sent to counseling right or like a therapist um but before i get to that part i think what i really enjoyed is that i love how the book touched on like important and like relevant topics of today so for example 
um, Yara, they mentioned like Yara going on Instagram and like posting pictures of like her and Fadi and the two girls and like picture perfect sceneries and stuff and like at the park or for holidays and mad comments and likes and you know she'll post a, a, like a caption and it'll be like something about like a perfect family but in reality like that's not what her life was and I love 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 that they included that because I just feel like that's that's today that's literally happening all day every day um so Yara goes to um the therapist and it, it's a struggle for her and we see through the book like it's a struggle because she's been through so much in her life. So she's been through so much before even being married to Fadi with going through so much drama with her parents, like her father um, abused her mother, like dealing with the whole like sexism of like the, her brothers get to do whatever they want, like more stuff from a woman is no man. Um, And so I'm not going to like go into like all the details of the things that she uncovers, but because I want you to read it for yourself, but through journaling and through talking to a therapist and like kind of like sitting with her emotions and not really running from it it really like causes her to heal which is like so stereotypical and like cliche and sweet but like it really does like she meets someone who is also going to therapy and then by them sharing their journey with her she opens up and shares her journey and then just journaling everything out like stuff that she kept like suppressing and the stuff with her marriage and her parents and how she feels and all this and that like she she basically like vomits it out in words and it changes her life like literally for the better and I just absolutely loved that I feel like so she she'd seen two therapists one at her job and then one um outside of her job and when she went to the second therapist outside of her job i just i had to like literally write down the specific page and like underline it in the book because i was like i have to read this for them um because it just says like so much so it says and this is not like any major spoilers or anything so no worries um i'm gonna read two things so it says The physical world is constantly reminding us that we're having a human experience, Esther said, which is Esther's the therapist, Um, with our five senses telling us what we hear, see, feel, smell, and taste. But something in us, deep in our heart, knows that we are made up of more than the sum total of our thoughts and feelings. We come into this world with an innate knowledge of our infinite spiritual nature, but through our human conditioning, we forget who we really are, the true magnificence of our being. I love that. I feel like um, not just for like somebody who is like super spiritual or religious and is attuned to that, but it just, you don't have to be to understand like that's so true. We have so much stuff like infiltrating our mind and like how she like mentioned for like social media, how Yara was reflecting on her own social media use. We have so many things like infiltrating our mind that we, we, we're we focused on things that we're seeing, things that we're feeling, things that we're hearing from all these sources. And we forget that like, we're actually like, like amazing. And we were created very magnificently. And it's just like cool to see that like a therapist just say it in like a couple sentences. Like, no, you're not just all this stuff that's like bothering you or bombarding you in your day-to-day life. Like you're much bigger than that. Um, I hope I explained that well. So that was one thing I was like, ooh, therapy for me. Um, And then this other one was really um, impactful. It says, unfortunately, it's very common for unhealed trauma to be passed down in families. And it can be particularly strong in ethnic minorities who often deal with a strong stigma and discrimination and can receive compromised care. Your mother was a victim, of course, but she was also a perpetrator. She might not have been aware of this and her behaviors may have simply mirrored what she saw in her own family. More and more research shows now that behavior patterns that reinforce trauma are not only passed on in a family, but they can be transmitted through DNA. And I'm also reading um, The Body Keeps uh, um, the Body Keeps Score and it's like talking a little bit more about like this stuff of like trauma being passed down like through DNA and ways that we 
literally would never even think of or like believe. Um, and when I read that, I was like, wow, through DNA is kind of, it's kind of unfair when you really think about it. Like, okay, a mother decides to have a child and then her trauma is being passed down in DNA when the child literally like didn't even ask for that. But it's just good to know because once you know, like, okay, I'm trying to work on myself and I'm feeling like th these are the things that's holding me back. Maybe it's not just something that I, it's like on the surface level that I can just go like talk to somebody about and be done with. Like it's deep ingrained in me and I need to get like deeper help if that makes sense. So I, like this chapter, chapter, I think this is chapter 44. Chapter 44 really was like a free therapy session for me because I was like, wow, interesting. And then there was one other thing that said there is no hierarchy of pain when it comes to traumatic experiences, which basically says like just because one person like experienced pain on like a much greater level than someone else, like just because your level of pain is bigger doesn't mean like you still both people experience something traumatic. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I really, really loved that Evil Eye took the story of like an Arab woman who hmm, I I want to like connect it. Evil Eye took the story of the girls in A Woman Is No Man and kind of showed how like opening up and talking about your past and seeking help and just kind of like sitting and like fighting through the emotions can end with like something beautiful and like change the trajectory of your life instead of like, because in the book, Yara was like, I have these two girls. I don't want them to like, just go through the same cycle that my grandmother went through and my mother and now me kind of I don't want the same thing for them like I can tell like they're already like eight they were like eight and maybe like six or something and they were already like noticing her sadness and like the way that life was like drawing her down and she didn't want that which is why she was like really into like I have to go to therapy I have to do this journaling regardless of how challenging and and, and stressful it might be um and so the story ends, um, for me, I think the story ended on a good note. For some people, they might disagree with that. But um, just because there was like one major thing that um, affected the entire family. But I think it ended with a good, like hopeful, positive um, note. And overall, the story is a story of like healing, which I love. I think this, I think this is like a really, really good book. I would give this book five stars and I would recommend it. Um, to anyone uh some of the major like things that i liked was like you know like i said a different perspective from the other book um just like general things i feel like the cover is so pretty i love the like color scheme of it um the chapters were they were different not too like not all of them were short and not all of them were long which is good helps you get through it um and the concept of like journaling and going to therapy because i'm also on my journaling every night journey um and it's been really helpful it helps you when you really have like a lot going on in your brain um and can't like get it into words so i loved the relatability of that and i actually didn't have any dislikes which is like amazing that tells you how good the book is um in the com in the caption the description I'll put like all the other themes that the book talked about, um, like motherhood, finding your own path, generational trauma, um, marriage, friendship, therapy, all that good stuff. I will um, put all that in the bio, um, bio description, because <laughs> I don't want the video to go on too long. And I want you guys to get the book, read it, and then come back and tell me what you think. So that was my first book of 2024. Um, I'm already reading my second book. It's going really well. Uh, my goal is to read 20 books, but I, I'm pretty sure I can do more than that if I just like keep up this momentum and this pace. But that was it. That was my review of Evil Eye. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you've read it already, because it's it was out since last year, so I'm sure people have read it. Please, please, please let me know what you think. Um, share your comments down below. I will respond to them um send me book recommendations because i know there's like so many books coming out this year and i always try to like take a screenshot or like write them down um, or add them to my goodreads um so please share them with me if you know of a good one that you would like me to read and review and as always thank you guys for your support 
Don't forget to like and share this with someone that also loves books or you think needs to get back into reading. Um, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.